morning, kids. You know, the Bible tells us that if you ask, you'll get an answer. If you seek, you'll find it. And if you knock, the door will be open. I want to invite you to open the door right now and join us for Children's Church with Pastor Nate. You're going to have a great time. See you later. Jesus took the twelve apostles aside and walked with them alone. He told them what would happen in Jerusalem. He said, we are going to Jerusalem. The Son of Man will be given to the leading leading priest and teacher of the law. They will say that he must die. They they will give him to the non-Jewish people who will laugh at him and spit on him. They will beat him with whips and kill him. But on the third day after he his death, he will rise to life again. Well, everyone, please bow your heads and close your eyes in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for everything you've done. I thank you for slowly helping the pandemic go away. I thank you for helping Children's Church come back together. I thank you for everyone that's done something. I thank for St. Jude and all the donations I went to them. And I ask you, God, to help everyone that doesn't have money and they're homeless and help them in the shelters. God, I ask you to put your hands over there. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Heroes of the Bible, Jonah. This is Jonah. Uh -huh. Jonah was a prophet. That means it was his job to tell people what God told him to say. Yep. One day, God told Jonah to go to Nineveh because the people of Nineveh were doing bad things. Uh... But instead, Jonah ran away. Where are you, please? 
and went to the port to board a ship going the other way. He was hoping to get away from God. He sailed for a place called Tarshish. While he was at sea, God sent a great and powerful wind over the sea that caused a storm that seemed like it would break the ship apart. Fearing for their lives, the sailors tried everything they could think of to save the ship. Meanwhile, Jonah was sound asleep. So the captain went down and said, How can you sleep at a time like this? Get up and pray to your God. Maybe he will help us. Then the crew figured out that Jonah was the reason for the storm. And they asked him, Who are you? Why is this happening to us? Jonah told them who he was and that he worshipped the one true God who made the sea. Then he told the sailors to throw him in the sea so the storm would stop. No way! The sailors still tried to escape the storm, but it was no use. Uh... So they asked God for forgiveness and threw Jonah into the sea. The storm stopped at once. Whoa! The sailors were amazed at God's power and they vowed to serve him. Now God sent a great fish to swallow Jonah. Uh, great. And Jonah was inside the fish for three days and nights. Jonah prayed to God from inside the fish and God ordered the fish to spit Jonah out. Yuck. God told Jonah again to go to the city of Nineveh to tell them what God had said about them. I get it, I get it. This time, Jonah obeyed God and went to Nineveh to deliver God's message. <coughs> the people of Nineveh stopped doing bad things and turned to God. They were saved because they listened to the message that God had given Jonah. Let's meet Jesus, God's one and only Son. He came to earth to save us, each and every one. Jesus, our King, the very best to be. One time he rode into the town, sitting on a donkey. Into Jerusalem, for all to see. People cheered and celebrated, waving palm tree leaves. Shouting Hosanna, for the King had come that day. It's Jesus from Nazareth. That Jesus was crucified He gave himself up on a cross And then he died But three days later He rose from that grave His tomb is empty And our sins he forgave He is risen He is alive Our Savior, our friend Our King Jesus is a okay and now we celebrate Jesus, our risen King, who came to save us. And for this, we sing to amazing things, to many to count. Let's all sing it, dance and shout. He did amazing things, to many to count. Let's all sing it, shout it. Let's 
Hey guys, welcome back to Kids Church. It's Pastor Nate here and I'm glad to see you again. You know, lately we've been talking a lot about how Jesus saves us, right? We had Palm Sunday and Easter and we talked about the resurrection and the death and the burial of Jesus. But we need to know, what is it that Jesus saved us from? So let's look at what the Bible says. Romans 3 and 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Amen. So that is God's word to us. It says, the wages of sin is death. So first, Jesus is saving us from death. Death caused by sin. Where did that come from, right? Well, in the Garden of Eden, when God first made man, he put man and, and, and woman in the garden, this beautiful, lush, perfect creation, and he gave us dominion over this. That means control. That means we were stewards of it, guardians of it. And God gave Adam, the first man, and Eve, his wife, one commandment. They could eat of any fruit of any tree that was in the garden, except the fruit that grew on the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God told them that if they did on that day, they would surely die. And that crafty serpent, the devil, came in and deceived Eve. And Eve took the fruit and ate it and shared it with Adam. They disobeyed God. And that's probably the best definition of sin. Sin is anything that we do that dis displeases and is disobedient to what God wants for us, right? And because of that, they did die. Adam and Eve and us as a result of what they did, we have been separated from God, right? God is perfect and holy, and the sin that they, they committed, that disobedience, stained them to where they couldn't be in relationship with God, right? Right? So it says, for the wages of sin is death. They disobeyed in sin, and they experienced spiritual death, relationship death with God. And ultimately, it allowed for physical death, because prior to that, men would never have even died physically. Okay, But it says, the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Well, who here likes getting gifts? I like getting gifts, birthdays, Christmases, just because you love me, give me a gift, right? Gifts are great. And the best part about gifts is you don't have to do anything to get them. Gifts are given as an act of love, as an act of grace, as an act of kindness, right? And the gift is eternal life through Christ Jesus. When we taught you over the last couple weeks about how Jesus died for your sins on the cross of Calvary, that was a death that was meant for us. When they weren't supposed to eat the fruit, and the fruit, when they didn't, they disobeyed, and it said, Thou shall surely die. That death was meant for us, right? But Jesus took that punishment for us on the cross. Even though he was perfect and without sin, he became sin and died in our place, right? He was the perfect sacrificial lamb to atone for our sins. Jesus paid it all. Well, because of that, we're getting this gift of salvation. Jesus died to wipe away that sin. And when the sin is wiped away, the death can be wiped away. So when it says the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, what Paul is telling us is that if we believe what Jesus did for us, then our sins are blotted away and we won't die anymore. That consequence of sin, that death, will be taken away from us, and we can live eternally with God thanks to what Jesus did. Isn't that good news? I hope so, because that's the gospel. That's what gospel means, the good news. The good news is even though sin kills, being disobedient kills, lying kills, cheating kills, stealing kills, the free gift from God is eternal life through the death, burial, and resurrection of His Son, Christ Jesus. I, lo I love that. That's one of my favorite verses in the Bible because it tells the whole story of what we're dealing with, but what God has for us and what Christ has done for us. Amen? Let us pray. God, we thank you for your word, Father. We thank you that you speak into us and you didn't give up on us even though we sinned and disobeyed you, God. We thank you for your son, Jesus, for his death, for his burial and for his resurrection, God, for the remission of our sins, so that we have been cleansed 
and can be pure and holy in heaven with you for all eternity. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. Now if you haven't accepted Jesus yet, if you haven't learned to lean on him and trust in him, then we invite you to do so right now. You can type in the comment bar below and one of our connection counselors will reach out to you. You can call the church at any time or have your parents bring you to church sometime. We would love to connect with you and make you part of the Kingdom family and the Mount Moriah family. And I just pray that if you hear the Holy Spirit right now whispering in your ear, take that first step and walk with Jesus. I love you guys. I'll see you next week. Wasn't that awesome? We're going to have worship like that every Sunday. You all, come back and join us. We're going to celebrate the Lord, have a great time, and enjoy what God wants us to know. Goodbye. See you next week.